you, man? Doing great, brother. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Uh, speaking of audio, I got the, the fan in the back there because it's a little hot in here. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. My brain came in and I got kicked out. Just boom, booted. <laughs> Yeah, is that much that was funny. If it was playing, it wouldn't have come out that way. You know, I like your uh, your rolling banner. The hex has done one million percent because you know it's done uh, ten thousand x or or one million percent, which is the same thing. But the crazy cool thing is, Bitcoin did six point five million x, and hex is designed to do that same thing uh, and then more. So it's like, man, to the people that ask, like, uh, you know, am I still early? Is it too late? Like, no, we haven't even done our first million X. That's a very good point. Um, we get a lot of people that come into the Pulse Chain chat thinking they're too late. Um, and we're like, man, if you're here now, you're early. You're early on, you're super early on Pulse and you're still way early on, on Hex. I mean, it is still pre-viral. The way the system's designed with the APY, um, it, it's perfect. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, yeah, and Richard had a, uh, a stream the other day, as, as everyone knows, the uh, the unboxing and then the actual stream. But someone was asking about the, the APY and like, hey, is it always going to stay this way type deal? But pretty much he was mentioning that, hey, if it ever fluctuates in the in the future and maybe it goes down on a, uh, like say that there's more hex stakers, then that could actually spike the price of the price itself. So you know, you might not still be getting that 40% APY is what Richard was kind of alluding to, you know, maybe years down the road, but you would still be getting like uh, insane returns because of that as well. Well, yeah, you're getting a percentage, a lower percentage of a higher priced asset. Exactly. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the way I see it, the way I see it, the um, we we're in a, like a weird situation now. If we go back to to number ten, like I feel that we might we might uh, I don't know. We, we this is going to be a really cool experiment now because all of a sudden it's like they would hide us again. Um, so I wonder what that would do. Like, would it give us just a little more time to even? accumulate or, or what but at this point it's just I feel that I, I just I don't like what's happened uh, Brian I hadn't I haven't told you but guys like Ty guys like uh, Giddy that been in the uh, in the in the chat guys like uh, hunted they just they never found hex because they just it was just not there to be found so yep. my question was today was like what happens if they do this again but with pulse? Right. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, that that is one of the reasons why coin market cap is being sued is because they're being sued for damages of not only what they report on their website is, oh, hey, we're honest coin market cap, but the the damages of like a missed opportunity, you know, like a, a lost cause type deal for, like you mentioned, people that wanted to get into crypto, they went on to coinmarketcap.com. Nowhere does it show hex and they happen to miss out. So they were kind of assuming that, you know, that people uh, lost out on like, I think like a 2X type deal, but we all know that it's probably a lot right. more than that when it comes to the damages that they caused. Yeah. We need to like, uh, little by little, I've been trying to just talk to, you know, the new guys that came in through Pauls and then just figured out that how, like, how, I would be asking that question all the time. Like, how did you hear about Pulse? How did you hear about Hex? And then it, it's just, it, it's a shame, you know, because some of us, we had a, a really good opportunity, but it was because we were following Richard from, from, you know, previous, previous, uh, previous years even. And then we just, before the FUD, before anything happened with the fours, we already had made up our minds, Hey, we're going to, we're, this is it. You know, we're gonna try. We're gonna try it with at first Bitcoin hex, then hex, um, because it's just everything that Richard was saying, man, to like 2020, 2019, telling us about you know all those tops when we hit 14, before when we had to hit 20. 
And then it's just, you can see it every time, like everyone was just kind of trying to ease you in, even when you saw that the market was going down, like now when we see it, you know, everyone says it's April, but you watch all these shows and they tell you, oh, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna be, we're gonna go to a million here like next week. And it's just unreal. Yeah, it's, uh, it, like you mentioned, it's unreal. And at the end of the day, it goes to show you the, the space that we're dealing with, like you mentioned, uh, and I think Ty mentioned it with, uh, with Freddie Quotes, but the Furu's eulogy, um, they, they had their chance, and guess what? They freaking blew it. They blew it on uh, taking advantage of the uh, audience that they had had, and just like Richards mentioned it with the margin trading, the trading, the leverage, is that you're feeding the audience into a meat grinder, and these people definitely know better, um, and even if they're not doing that, some of them are, you know, they're getting paid off in the back end to promote whatever XYZ brand new token. And then uh, Hexologist, he's actually done this before where you see like a timeline of the, the crypto furu that's shilling the project. And then you see like a day later or like hours later, the actual price dump itself. Um, but before, like a couple of days before they actually shill it, you see like the accumulation, you know? So whatever oh, way that they're the kind of... Yeah, whatever way that they're they're greasing each other and kind of like, you know, paying off the influencer, uh, frankly, it's disgusting. And like I said, it comes off of the 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 people that are trusting that that person and they're getting wrecked. And a lot of it is people, you know, because I had the same thing happen for myself in 2017, joined a chat room and uh, things like this. Um, but at the end of the day, it took me getting wrecked to realize that, hey, why am I listening to this other person and why am I trading in all these different things? Like my success in crypto from the beginning was just buying and forgetting about it. And so when, uh, when Hex came out and I had followed Richard that whole time, it was like, I was almost done with crypto. You know, I was just kind of done with the food ruse, done with the dishonesty. And then I was like, man, you know, there's going to be the Hail Mary shot, liquidated all the Litecoin into Ethereum and then just did the uh, adoption amplifier. Nice. And this, this recommendation from Pava, this is what I like. Because at this point, we do two things at the same time. We get the information that we need from a trusted source, and then we stop giving clicks to coin market crap. And then if Nomix decides to go that route, we'll stop giving them likes, uh, not likes, uh, clicks as well. We just will do our own thing. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, you mentioned coin market cap, and, and now Nomix, and you know what a what a shame to see what what Clay is doing over there, uh, Clay Collins with Nomix, but. But anyways, what it comes down to is for those that haven't been here since day one and even before that, um, a lot of times Richard's been ridiculed or Hex has been ridiculed. But what we've done is kind of build around them. So you've got Hex.Vision, Staker.App, Hexin, uh, Hexinfo.io, uh, I think like another Hex.com. But what it comes down to is, is, like I said, if there's people that are gatekeeping it and that aren't going to uh, you know, show the actual data honestly, because of some sort of random arbitrary thing that they just decided, then it really speaks volumes more about them than it does us. But like I said, uh, hexagons are known for just routing around people and just building our own things and not playing their game. Yep, no, I agree. So did you want to, this, did you want to answer that question in chat from Blackbird regarding- Yeah, I, I wanted to say, I mean, I, the thing with that uh, Blackbird, it's just, I mean, this is like a, this is like a four, all right, so he's asking what will happen with the prices of EHEX and PHEX after 30 days. Okay. So I mean, I have, them. yeah, I have I have a window. I mean, I, I'm, I'm the ones that keep saying that it might take a while and it's a very unpopular, <laughs> it's an unpopular uh, opinion on chat and it creates a lot of drama. But then what I think is that there will be a dip I'm going to say dip because everybody automatically assumes dump. There'll be a dip in price on eHex because some people will, will definitely try to take some of their eHex gains and try to buy cheaper either Pulse or cheaper Hex on Pulse. Or maybe they'll try to buy some of the, of the PRCs. Um, so in the case that we were to have a little liquidity, then obviously the price could reach parity super quick. If there's a lot of liquidity, we probably have to like buy it. 
to reach parity. So if E hex goes down a little, V hex goes up a lot, we could, I'm thinking maybe reach parity. I, I keep thinking for some reason, maybe three months. It's just, I keep thinking that at this point last year, we weren't at one penny, but now we're asking P hex to do like quarters or 50 cents in, 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 in days. And I'm, I'm, maybe that's why I'm thinking that way. The way I see it, if we reach parity in seconds, I'll be static because obviously well, I'm that's a lot of economic power to reach parity. And I think to reach parity, um, you know, E hex will have to come down some, uh, hex on pulse will come up some. Um, and I think they will stabilize and they, they will seesaw somewhat. Um, and people, I believe, will, will use both. Uh, assets on both chains for different reasons. Yep. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, yeah, sure, there might be some some fluctuation. That's always uh, bound to happen, especially when you have some uh, some new fork and things like that. We'd see that with Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and things like that. But uh, Ty's last point that he mentioned, I definitely agree with that. Uh, I mean, people are going to be using both the systems, in my opinion. But um, you know, with with eHex you're probably just going to see the the staking and the actual stakes themselves just keep going longer and longer because uh, pull chain is going to be great for those shorter term stakes, you know, anything under a year, things like that. But there's uh, there's people that didn't participate in the pull chain uh, sacrifice that have large bags of, of EX, you know? And so I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, both of the contract code on, on either blockchain is the same. And all you kind of have a, a difference in is the native network that it's running on top of. So I think they'll still do well. And, um, you know, if one of them dips, who knows? I mean, at the end of the day, it's still uh, an incredible yield. And uh, people that can kind of afford those fees and afford that higher expense, I think they'll, uh, they'll continue to participate. I don't think newbies will care if we ranked 11 or three market cap. It's a vanity metric. Uh, yeah, the problem with the newbies is they don't really understand the vanity metric until they come to uh, the chats and start interacting with the community. And then they we explain how that metric comes about. And um, and then they're like, well, they've never really thought of it that way. And I was the same when I first got into crypto. Um, market cap, price, page one, they were all the things that you just looked at. That was just... Uh, part of your learning curve. Right. Yeah, exactly. My biggest issue more than the, just, the, again, the vanity metric of the market cap, it was more than, than you guys couldn't find it. Because let's be honest, no, not many people are like venturing to page three of, of coin market crap. You know what I mean? Like what's after page one? I mean, I just, I remember in 2017 going to like coin market cap like daily and probably not going over like number 20 on page one. You know, like right. that was it. If you watch like the main, you know, the main coins. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yeah. No, I, I think, uh, I think as far as Hex becoming what it's designed to do, which is not only surpass Bitcoin and like I mentioned, do Bitcoin 6.5 million X, things like that. But I think it's uh, success is inevitable. I mean, you know, look at the community that we have from the foundation up and then same thing with the price performance in the pro the product, not the project. But what I wanted to say is because uh, I wasn't too sure uh, last night on Nights of Crypto with uh, with Clay's tweets, um, the founder of Nomics, I, I actually hadn't even seen that all day. I was doing something else in the morning. And um, what it comes down to is the no no I, I saw it now oh, um, and i saw it last night but but the point is is that when we see with coin market cap that they've ranked hex at 201 and other cryptos for the longest time that doesn't say anything bad about us that says everything bad about them and same thing with the integrity of clay and and all of a sudden asking questions about uh, the oa and the circulating supply um i caught your guys' stream you know, a little bit before I actually joined. And, you know, you, you really can't apply all of the, the rules to just hex and then exclude Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of these other things that would be affected by those same measures too. So what I'm getting at is when other people, you know, say if Nomics does their little change, 
it's going to be similar to coin market cap where they're literally causing harm uh, to their users and you know it's a uh, it's something that you can't really trust after a while when someone's already screwed you over once you know fool me once things right. like that <laughs> <laughs> Ty, you're a fan. Yeah, no, I mean, I just, I have issues with number one being like that, like public, almost like he's just announcing the funeral that it's it's going to happen. Just like, hey, guys, this is what about to happen, you know? And, hey, uh, identity. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, can you're you good, brother. Send, can you send Jay Money a uh, stream link? Tell him it's on his tweet on his Telegram. It's been for. Tell him to go his Telegram. I think I sent it like ten minutes ago. Oh, okay. There you go, Jay Money. It's uh, in your private Telegram. Sorry, keep sorry, going. bro. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, sorry about that, Jay. Um, I, I think I sent it to him, and I forgot to I forgot to tell him. Um, so. Yeah, it's just, again, him saying it like this, like kind of public, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, now it's, it's, it's sad. You know, it's sad because we, we've been giving them a lot of clicks for the past year, um, and now all of a sudden they're going to do us this way. And, and it's, it is what it is. Like, like, um, mm -hmm. like, like Brent said, like, you know, us that know what we're doing, then we're just we're just gonna continue to DCA into this thing. I mean, I know that every time I get a few bucks, I mean, I'm not gonna put them in the bank. You know what I mean? No. So it's just, I might not put them 15 years, but if I don't need it for a year, then I'll just do a short stake with, with cheaper fees on the pulse chain and that type of situation. But then the, the whole changing us last minute, I'm, I'm, I don't like it. But at this point, I'm not surprised. The only reason I'm mentioning it is not to create FUD in the community. It's just so that if we wake up tomorrow and we're at 10, hey, guys, nothing's going on. We're going to continue up and to the right. So pretty much I'm just trying to create awareness more than anything because at this point, I'm not surprised if it'll happen tomorrow. <laughs> you know, right. like nothing surprises me anymore. Yeah. No, I mean, Kyle mentioned the same thing. He had uh, spoken with Clay and... They DM'd each other, and then he had mentioned that they spoke on the phone. And then, yeah, like towards the very most recent update of that tweet, he was pretty much saying that, hey, he spoke with Nomics, and it's pretty much going to be a go-ahead. But like I was saying, I mean, just like with uh, Tone Vase having three lawyers on with uh, with Richard Hart on day one, uh, this doesn't say anything about Hex or Hexicans. It says pretty much everything about the, the yeah. person that's doing it, right? And you know, Hex, I mean, whatever kind of circulating supply they do, a Hex will continue to pump up and, you know, you can't gatekeep something forever, so. Yeah, I agree. What up, Jay? We've got Jay Money's in the house. How you doing, Jay? What's up, fellas? Doing Good great, bro. Love Jay, is, think Jay is a resident of the Pulse Chain chat, like, every hour on the hour you can every catch day. him at work like he, he's like me at some points like i would be like taking calls at work and then just being like uh yes can i place you on mute yeah what, what was that question again guys uh, what were you guys talking about <laughs> like, <laughs> one time i was taking a call and then all of a sudden i forgot to mute the chat so i'm like they're like yeah can i please have your name and, and everyone's like the chat like no <laughs> you're like you're you're in the chat too it's like oh shit, sorry guys. that's hilarious Oh, dude, it's that day. It was funny because it was the Danny was was in the chat. He started like screaming and stuff, so that nothing was recorded. So shout out to Dan because, like, yeah, I was about to like tell like a bunch of uh, private information for one of the clients just on on the YouTube stream. So yeah, I, I was doing the same thing before before I uh, put in my resignation. That uh, at my job, I kind of had like a a lot of freedom already like a not much micromanagement and things like that because I can't just because of the performance all. something happened no let me jump back in all right um, i think we, so, we lost so, it mm. oh yeah, yeah. no well, but uh, it, it's it's cool that uh that you had that right because because i was doing the same thing before i retired which was just literally the the pulse chain 
chat was on 24 seven and same thing, trying to interact yeah. with the people. And, you know, it goes to show you what your priorities are. I mean, same thing with Wales and some of these other people. I mean, instead of uh, focused on like the latest drama or, you know, politics, this and that, uh, you're focused on bettering your your financial future, which at the end of the day, the day can buy you all of those things. For sure. Yeah, I mean, like right now, that's pretty much the way I feel. It's just, I noticed that when we were in the chat, and, and I know, uh, Brand, you, you, you were in the chat freaking like, same like me, like freaking 24 seven from like, like uh, April, May and all these months. And then um, I noticed that there was a lot of people that they would come in to FUD or they would come in to just, you know, ask a few questions or this or that. And then there'll be some other people that would come in, learn and and anyone that would have something to say, you know, that would pick here a little bit from from Brian, a little bit from Gary, a little bit from Taylor. And, and Dan is always in the chat. And I mean, everyone else that's in the chat, you know, especially like like the newbies are always in the chat, Ty, J Money. Um, I mean, we have uh, JJ is always in the chat, Hunted, uh, DMF, Mandalorian. I mean, shout out to everyone that's always in the chat. I know I'm gonna miss names that like Lucky, he's always in the chat too. I mean, it's just, it's such a cool community and then i just don't want us to lose that i kind of want to bridge in like the the new project that i decided to do yesterday brand is just to bring in all the ogs and then just pretty much just have them tell their story pretty much what gary was doing you know like bringing everyone and then just let them just hey just tell us all, all your struggles from year one you know like and you got a pretty good response to that yeah Yes, sir. I mean, like, Brand, yesterday I messaged, like, I want to say, like, maybe, like, 20 OGs. I got, like, go nice, ahead. Dude. I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, we're going to talk to RG on Sunday. Tomorrow we're yeah. going to talk to David. We're going to talk to Hexmac. On Monday we're going to talk to Yashdeep. And yeah. then, um, yeah, bro, like, I'm setting up to, like, talk to Hexo, talk to a bunch of the guys. Because I want, I, I want like, the, 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 the newbies, like, the question – any questions that they have in their mind to just be answered because mm -hmm. I want them to know guys like me, guys like you, we've done really well with Hex and we're still here. Today I'm fighting with Coinbase because it wouldn't let me buy the whole amount that I want <laughs> that I wanted to bring. So it's like, bro, I'm still having issues to, to go from point fiat to point Hex. But um, right. it's crazy in this day and age that that's still happening. Yeah. Mm. So Jay, yeah, yeah. what's up, Jay? What's up, brother? Oh, good. Man. How you guys doing? Good, man. Yeah, good, I, good, I man. haven't seen you on stream before. Uh, you know, I, I haven't heard yeah. your story or Ty's story, but it's cool to see. Just like Identity mentioned, it's cool to see uh, newer faces and just people in general. I mean, because I was wondering the same thing too. Like, man, what is my uh, role like how can i kind of help in in uh the streaming and it's similar to identity like you know just having people on having good conversations and you know being able to talk hex crypto but then other things too like what what got them there in the first place and it's uh it's important i mean what other community other than hex do you have so many retired multimillionaires, things like this that are still streaming on a daily basis that are still helping out the the noobs, quote unquote, that are just getting in. Like you don't see that anywhere. And just like Richard is uh, accessible as a billionaire, like he, he's doing a meetup tomorrow um, in Prague. Uh, you know, the, the OG hexagons are, are very similar from what we've seen as well. I haven't witnessed this anywhere. Um, the community is something else. And I guess until you actually, uh, if you're not in the, in the community, uh, come, come in, come to Pulse Chain, Telegram and Hex, and you'll see what we're talking about. It, it is something quite different. Uh, on a regular basis, people come in with with questions that aren't even to do with Pulse. There might even be like a security question, and Papa and myself are big on the security with hardware wallets, and we will actually walk them through the whole process and educate them where to, where to buy the ledger or the Trezor, how to set it up, how to migrate it, um, and yeah, you, you, you see other people in there going, I can't believe you can get this type of information and help inside here, inside this telegram. Like, it's just amazing. Um, but I think that's what it's all about. We all just try to help each other. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and honestly, like, uh, just just real quick, that can't go understated enough. I mean, you know, all of you guys that are helping with security, uh, Papa B, I know he's not here now, but that is really cool and really important because if people have uh, their crypto and they're taking screenshots of the seed phrase, things like this, and they get compromised, you know, their experience is going to be uh, very bad as opposed to realizing that, hey, that's the most uh, important part from the beginning. You want to tell your story, Jai Money? Oh uh, yeah. Um, honestly, guys, like I, the the amount of time I spent in chat is about as long as I've been in in crypto in general. Uh, <laughs> I got in uh, last week of February. I uh, got in touch with one of my buddies who's an OG from the AA. He got in pretty good. He set. Um, he talked to me way back in, and of course, I'm one of those same stories that I didn't listen. Uh, which was my mistake, but uh, I am blessed to be here now. Uh, I spend every waking minute I can in chat. I still learn more every single day, um, and I try to help out with the things I can help out with. And uh, in a mere six months, I think I've picked up a, a lot of knowledge literally out of this chat, or out of the, the Pulse Chain chat, I should say. But yeah, no, awesome. uh, I got into a couple other little cryptos here and there, lost some money, of course. Uh, I finally got into Hex, got got a nice little staking ladder going, and yeah, it's a uh, place to be. I'm I'm in a, I'm in it for the long run. Did my sack, getting some pulls coming. Just uh, I'm excited. Good one. And you've even got the shirt. I don't have any shirt. Yeah, I saw that. No the tank, wear, yeah. man. <laughs> hey, Bailey, it's got a that pulse chain shirt's uh, pretty sweet too. Uh, yeah, I got like five shirts already. <laughs> nice, dude. Awesome. That's so cool. I might yeah. have to hit up Sammy Chica. She's in Australia. In fact, Sammy only lives like, I'm not going to dox either of us, but oh. she only lives 20, sure. 20 minutes from me, Sammy Chica. Nice, dude. Um, yeah, yeah. We talk a lot privately. And, um, we've grown up in similar areas, uh, similar similar ages, and um, I think she might have, have some uh, hex wear that I can um, maybe Hell get yeah. off her. So if, you, if you're listening, Sammy... Hook me up. You know what? I'm uh, I'm surprised by how many, you know, sure, we've got hexagons all over the world, but there's so many Australian hexagons, man. Like, that is so cool to see. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the other thing is, too, is, uh, you know, I've always been curious about travel and, and people in general, but uh, the amount of people that I've been able to meet on streams or at some of the meetups, things like that, are, uh, are opportunities I never thought that crypto would would present themselves to to be so it's really cool to uh, learn from everyone hear everyone's uh, story and and uh yeah that's really cool that you that you got in you know six months ago and uh that you told your story i mean you mentioned kind of not getting in when your buddy first told you and then getting in a little bit later but just like i was telling identity block and things like this like you know you're, you're still in so early even though you you didn't get in that first time that he had mentioned it well, I believe that the getting in early thing is a fallacy because I, I do believe that X is going to continue to go up, up into the right. And it, yeah, if you yeah. start thinking and if you start thinking of percentages instead of dollars, it really doesn't matter when you get in because 10X is 10X no matter from where you yeah. started from. And if it's going up and keeps going up, you know, it, it's just X's and X's and X's. It doesn't matter where you get in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, That's why, and, you know, oh. I've seen the shift in, in language from T shares to B shares. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, it's all just shares. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's important that we start talking and, and uh, about B shares because a lot of people that are especially new into the space um, see a T share and they see all the OGs talking T shares and they're like, wow, man, I'm, I'm, I am late. And, and it does, it can come across that way. Um, but B shares are the new T shares now, and next year or the year after that, it'll be M shares. What matters right. is um, the APY on the dollars yeah. that you put in. So you just um, yep. you get what you can, you stake it out, get the APY, um, and in a year's time, the new people coming in will go, I can't believe you've got B shares. It's exactly. going to be that, that flow exactly. on effect. That's how it's going to work. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, at any point in time, the T shares, B shares, M shares matter. It's the APY, straight period. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really true, and uh, Ty brings up a very good point about not just uh, 
T shares or, or even B shares, things like that. Because at the end of the day, if someone does see the price of a T share right now and they haven't even gotten in, they're going to feel priced out. They're going to you know feel many ways. But I mean, it really just is shares like you mentioned. And the, the really cool thing is like in the future, um, each individual share is supposed to be more valuable than each individual hex, which goes to show you how, uh, how much even a million shares or things like that could do. But it really just is that unit of account for the the piece of the pie that you get from the uh, you know from the interest and things like that. So whether you have twenty dollars, things like that, or you know twenty thousand um, dollars, it's all very very similar. Um, the the main thing is like, hey, if you're staking, then you're earning interest every single day as opposed to holding liquid like you would Bitcoin and uh, and being diluted by the other people that are having the new coins minted. Yeah, I agree. So then, um, are we pretty much ready for uh, number one hacks to be taken down on Nomics? And then are we ready for then, obviously, the fuckery to continue when Pulse comes out? Yeah, I think so. Bring it. In the end, I'm not, personally, I mean, I'm not really bothered. I think the community's strong. If we just concentrate on what we got to do, we just keep pushing and doing our own thing. Um, I think Pulse and Hex will be just fine. Sure, it might be, it might take a little bit longer, but it's inev inevitable what it's going to do. So uh, I just feel sorry more for the people that aren't aware. That's the people that are missing out because of the way these uh, businesses are conducting themselves. That's the disappointing part. Right. Well, in, in Richard talks about in crypto, what's the only thing people care about? It's not that they're in it for the tech, it's that they care about the mad gain. So I think what Clay is possibly doing and from what it sounds like, oh. that that's going to uh, really just make it a lot more apparent to people that the market cap doesn't actually matter because when they see, right. oh, that hex drops a few positions, that's fine. But then the price is continuing to just pump you know, ridiculously high, then then they might just realize that, oh, okay, maybe I was focused on the wrong thing. Yeah, I think most people that really deep in heck, they're gonna watch the streams or they're gonna come into the Pulse Chain chat and listen to what it's all about. Um, the mainstreamers that are, are not mainstreamers, but the, the majority of people are out looking at charts and, and, and ranking sites and they're only at the top 50. Those guys are looking to trade anyway. You know, uh, so I think you're going to get a more organic growth through just word of mouth, honestly. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That's that's a great point. And you see, that's that's exactly why that's that's the exact type of person that I want in in Hex. I want the, the person that needs that APY, that person that's been wrecked by the bank or wrecked by trading crap coins and and they need this you know not someone that's looking to flip a one x or two x because those those people they're not gonna stake so they're not gonna they're not gonna be with us you know from the long run and um yeah exactly it's it's just it's it's pretty much like hex is not the product for them and then they don't need it anyways you know they don't need a quick flip they just need to wait <laughs> A uh, one year and ten months, bro. This is just crazy. You know, it's almost like we're talking yeah. that one year and ten months. It's slow. You know what I mean? Like, imagine how many, uh, like, not even decades. I mean, it's like probably lifetimes would take us to make the type of APY brand that we've done in a year and ten. Kidding? Dude, lifetimes. it would probably be yeah, exactly. It's like a few yeah. lifetimes yeah. in, right. in well, legacy. Yeah, I well, mean, I, it it really. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, go just ahead. real quick. It, it's just the difference of, of cryptocurrency, right? It's a literal programmed currency. And, you know, at the end of the day, too, whether it's a dollar or fiat or like dollar or yen, stuff like that, fiat in general is pretty much all digital anymore. And um, like Richard talks about, like, we're just taking cryptocurrency and taking what Bitcoin's done and programming different things in that system that make it uh make it more valuable so it is cool to see that uh you know at the end of the day it's going to compete with things like the fed and is going to uh solve yes, a lot sir. more problems than just the money problem like no one has ever had that kind of ambition and 
my dad asked me like, Hey, Bran, what if this happens? And I was telling him that like, Hey, the contract itself is like literally immutable. Like Richard couldn't change it if he had wanted to. So that's something that you need if you're going to not only have so many billions locked up, but if you're going to go up against these, uh, these big entities that have been, you know, right. running the, the world for a while. They're coming for you. We got a bunch of t-shirts. We're going to kick the bankers' butts. Hey, guys, what I was thinking is, and this is what gets me in a lot of trouble in the chat, and Jay, and Jay knows it gets me in a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> why I mention the whole I would like for Hex on the Pulse chain to start almost in the same situation as Hex did, like eHex on, you know, like a, a bunch of decimal points and, and then like a really low price because if if we're taken down to number 10 this will give us just enough chance to bring in that many people that need hacks before the banksters get in you know because we know they're gonna get in i mean at this point it's a no-brainer they're, they're seeking five and seven percent apy uh, so at this point we know they're gonna get in uh, Three Arrows has been in since, like, Silver the Antidote told us uh, probably more than a year ago now. So we know that big money has been trickling into Hex already for however long. I mean, do you remember that, Brand? whenever uh, Silver mentioned it? It has been a year now, probably, right? Okay. Well, and, and when the, the literal uh, God Whale had bought that was a Ethereum, you know, Genesis holder and things like that, uh, that showed me that, oh, okay, like, the, the big people definitely are watching, and they actually recently bought again, too, on, I think, the most recent dip. But, um, yeah, it's cool. I mean, when you see big money getting in and you see people that are credible, things like that, I mean, the, the product really just does sell itself. Yeah, we're seeing all so the guys that got in early that are still buying with conviction. That's, that's enough, you know. It's It's... Bro, yeah, I, I pretty much, stuff. this this last gig that I was doing pretty much was so that all the money that I was bringing into Sacrifice was fresh, you know? So that way I didn't have to move any of my stake hacks, any of my liquid hacks. I could just completely come in with fresh fiat from outside because I just, at, at this point, it's just, I don't see, for the last, I want to say, last 24 to... You know, at least in 2012, I started messing with silver. And I know Brandon did too. You know, it's like we, we tried, you know, <laughs> we were seeking something, some type of capital asset that we could put it on this side and take some type of purchasing power. Even, I mean, I, me, I was trying to think maybe two, six, five years, something like that. But I mean, all, all the silver that I sold last year to turn into hex. Bro, I mean, at this point, it would have been the, pretty much the same price, plus hit by like 20% inflation or whatever it is, transitory inflation. Um, but right now, it's probably made me, I don't know, maybe like 4,000x or something since I put it in the summer. I, I just, I haven't even quantified it at this point. I, I It's beyond my comprehension at this level. Um, but I just, I know that if I would have put left all that silver in 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 the summer last year and take in at this point i mean silver's what it's still like the same 20 i sold it at around 28 29 bucks because it was pumping in august but that was it like i remember like hearing a bunch of people telling me bro silver's like 50 bucks 50 bucks and then the second that i heard it by like the fourth person i was like I'm on my way to the dealer to sell all the silver because i knew we were going to 20 before we were going to hit 50. I mean, I just, I, it just didn't make sense. Too many people giving me metals advice, bro. Like, I was like, dude, I'm paying like eight bucks premium on a fucking ounce. I'm not getting a good deal. I don't give a shit if silver is this price. I, I got lucky though, because in March at the COVID dip, uh, it dipped so hard that it dipped to like 12 bucks. So with premium, I was getting like 19 bucks, 20 bucks per ounce. So I wasn't getting no deals. I was buying silver because I thought that, you know, the fiat was going to, to hell. Well, yeah, it, it it, is. that is the cool thing. Um, yeah, like if, if you like Bitcoin, if you like silver, you can you can buy it back later after the gains from Hex, you know. That's what I'm going to do. 
It's like take like a little tiny percentage. And isn't that crazy? Like, it's like now it's multiplied so much that I can just take like a little tiny percentage and do pretty much what Richard had mentioned for like the maxis. Remember, Brad used to say like, just dude, if you like Bitcoin, just buy Hex and then buy the Bitcoin back. <laughs> it was so funny. He used to say that too all the time. Did and, you guys, um, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, go. I you no, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. I was just going to say, uh, did you guys see some updates regarding the, uh, the documentary? Um, so, uh, obviously, they've already had uh, quite a bit of money to make the documentary, and there was a little bit more uh, they've got on, one, on their website for donations. And um, I think uh, 200 and, what is it, 240,000 hex has been donated in the last day, day and a half. Wow. Yep, um, yep. So, so they're halfway, halfway to the goal of finishing everything that they need. But uh, either way, the documentary is going to come out. It's going to be super high quality. Uh, I don't know if you guys in chat have seen it. I'm sure you probably all have if you're here. Um, but yeah, it, I'm excited for that doco. Yeah, I identity. You should maybe uh, you know consider playing it if uh, if any of the people haven't haven't seen it because because oh. I agree. I mean. It's literally the the most professional thing that I've ever seen, and uh, yeah. what it comes down to is is this really is a story that does need to be told. Uh, when we talk about um, you know being gate kept here and there, that's that's fine in in the meantime, right? Because we all know that it's going to surpass that. But there there just comes a point where like are they going to continue gatekeeping hex on on say say maybe in the future nomics or currently on coin market cap? when we flip Bitcoin or when we flip Ethereum, because uh, what it shows to me is, you know, when it comes to psychology, that they're kind of like projecting their fear that Hex is going to do that and that it is going to be a reality. So now all of a sudden, it just seems such unique timing that they're trying to, you know, tweak with the numbers and kind of buy themselves time. But it literally is inevitable. I mean, Hex is that black hole for the financial capital and, and on both sides too, on, on both chains. I think it's going to do very well. Yeah. And those guys making that documentary, they're no joke. I think they've won four Emmys. Um, you know, they, they definitely have high quality content, as you can see by the, the preview, which has got everyone amped. And going off their website, their timeline is about a year from now, Q3 of 2022, Q4 of 2022, for it to be released on uh, major... Uh, streaming platforms. I'm not sure whether that's been finalized yet, whether it's going to be Netflix or Amazon uh, or multiples, I'm not sure, but it's probably about a year away. Nice. Yeah, that was, that was very well done. I mean, Richard talks about his peers, right? His peers are not Peter McCormick or BitBoy or these other people. His peers are the, literally the richest people in the world as far as, in my opinion, what I think he should be compared to. Um, and, and like I mentioned earlier, it's just kind of inevitable for Hex to, to do that and for him to get that future press. But um, the, the documentary that you mentioned, that little reel, that, that teaser, that was, uh, that was really cool. I mean, you've got people that have the, the highest skill in their industry and they're willing to tell the story and they want to uh, because they they understand that this is a anomaly and they you can kind of like judge a book by its cover when you see how many haters that hex has and when you see the success and and there's no fishy thing about it it's not a ponzi or anything like that then it's like man what is the reason that they're doing this so it's cool that they're going to tell the story This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yes, every scammer in the world is going to tell you something similar. But in this case, you are actually going to have it. <laughs> I mean, you're scamming. Richard Hart, he's got a history of being called the scam master. Yeah, some weird things going on with his coins. Making one of the biggest Ponzi schemes that we have ever seen. Hex coin is 1,000% a scam coin. People are going... <laughs> To lose money because of you. Remember all the haters? All the haters that told you that I was a scammer and Hex was a scam? I got bad news for the haters. 
we're making new all-time highs where everything else is getting wrecked. Price is up four or 5,000 fold in 600 days. I've made enough money in the last week that I could buy a house in cash. I would never have to work another day in my life. I'm here to shell. I want to change the world. I can only do that if people participate. What? The only thing that matters in this world is goods and services. Everything else is accounting. And our made up imaginary internet money is better than the government's made up imaginary internet money. Both of them are only backed by the shared fiction of the humans believing that they have value. If Hex is a religion, then Richard is God. I'm in crypto for glory. I want to have the best cryptocurrency that's ever existed. I want to have the best performing asset that's ever existed. And so I think of blockchain as like the internet. In the 90s, everyone thought the internet was just for email. <laughs> I bought some this morning. They're imaginary quarters. Like, it's like playing Monopoly. I put it all in. I put, I mean, I went. Like, all of what? <laughs> all of our house money. This is a force that is not going to go away. The cryptocurrency is not going away. And at some point, the people that you met that you thought were crazy loon birds, they're going to be in the 1%. And they're going to be the people that own half everything. Hell yeah. Goosebumps yeah. every time I watch it. I get pumped. Yeah. Goosebumps every yeah. time. It's... Uh... Those guys really know how to, to make it preview. Yeah, well, it, it is what Richard had said that, right, it is a force that's not going to go away. And, you know, that started off with Bitcoin. They called it the tulip bubble and things like this. And and Richard kind of uh, added on to that. And he's like, well, the tulip bubble never came back, right? But Bitcoin, it has these like three-year bull run and then like one-year uh, bear market generally where it does like it's 85% correction, but it keeps going back higher and higher. And we're seeing the same thing with Hex, right? Just the market cycles are more quick. And um, yeah, he also mentioned that those those crazy people that you thought were, were crazy in the future are going to own half of everything, which I thought was pretty cool. Definitely a uh, shift in wealth, for sure. So... This is a this is a theory that someone that might want to take credit or not take credit mentioned to me one day, and I hadn't thought about it. So when I thought about that being possible, because whenever we did sacrifice that, there was that disclaimer that said that one percent could be used for anything, and you know all I know is that. There was a lot of hex. I mean, there was there was like what, like a hundred and thirteen, or a hundred and however many billion units of hex that were sent to the sacrifice address. So if like half of a percent were to end up as liquidity, that's that's a lot of that's more than half a million uh, hex. It's going to be interesting for sure. I mean, there's so many game theories, and there's there's been. Hours and hours of discussion in the Pulse Chain chat about about this. Um, obviously, no one can agree. They've all got their theories of why it might start high, low, how much supply there will be. Um, it's going to be interesting when uh, day one comes around. Right. There you go. Yeah. No. It's a. It, it's cool to see that people like like uh, you know talk is cheap, right? And in crypto, there's there's a lot of talk. Um, we've heard of. Ethereum 2.0, which was the proof of stake uh, mining consensus change. We've heard that since like 2017. And then Richard was finally like, man, what the hell is taking so long? I'm going to put this matter into my own hands. Um, so like you guys mentioned in the Pulse Chain chats, like there's people that used to work for uh, Ethereum as developers or big fans of that community. And now they're coming to the, the better technology, which is Pulse Chain, that's uh, actually going to launch more quickly than uh, ETH 2.0 uh, ever will. So, you guys want to tackle this? Because I'm kind of confused here. I think the 
the THC is hitting me right now. Total dollar value of Snapchat <laughs> split will stay the same theoretically, but what will happen to interest rates with a split? Since you, yeah, but it's just it's like a split, but it's just not a split. Uh, yeah, he's thinking double of doubling on the same on the same chain instead. Of, it's a copy on the right. separate chain. Two different protocols. Like, yeah, it's like we're getting all this good stuff. The only thing I do think it's going to split is that anyone that goes from EHEX, and let's say that we go from 9.83 that we are now to 7.83, so we lower like 2% of people that are doing short stakes, and then they decide they want to move into HEX on P chain, um, on Pulse chain, um, and then all of a sudden over at, at Pulse, HEX is locked up 10% or something like that. And then it's ten percent on Pulse, but then seven point eight or something like that on on Ehex. I mean, for some people, that two percent. I checked the other day, and and two percent less on stake. It's not two percent less APY. It's like a shit ton of less. I, I mean, more APY. I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. Yes, please. I mean, so that's why I keep thinking that a lot of people are going to think that EHEX is not the winning horse, and it might still be the winning horse because even if you're getting cheaper fees on Pulse, there's lower locked on, on Ethereum, and then all of a sudden for someone that may be locking a lot of Comas, then, I mean, that's a lot of... How much is it, Jay? I'm sorry, I couldn't see. Uh, like a 7.8% uh, locking uh, percentage would run around a 47.3 APY. So imagine that, imagine that's like a million dollars and it makes you an extra 7 APY. Imagine if it's 10 million. Well, that's 10% over the, what it is right now today. It's like 37 and some change. So that's why I keep telling people, try not to jump because it's not only going to cost you an emergency stake, it's going to cost you more than what you think. It's just going to take you like 10 years to figure it out. Because <laughs> you're going to have to be like back and say like, oh man, I left all the APY on the table. Right. Yeah, I don't know if you were on the chat earlier, but Mandalorian was putting down a good deal about how, you know, the, the chance for arbitrage between the two is going to go on for a long time and that's going to keep the price of both assets probably at parity for a while oh yeah i heard that up to in there and that makes so much sense to me it's like you and i identity back in when uh, uh sacrifice was first going down we were talking about that like yeah you're gonna buy p hex on tuesday and you're gonna buy e hex on thursday because it's yeah, just yeah. gonna go down one way or the other like, it's just gonna that. Like this, yeah, for sure. Dude, that's what I want. I want dips on like on on opposite days. You know, be someone like locks on. I mean, ends on one day, sells on the other, and then they mm -hmm. just keep like having like this thing where, well, I keep thinking it's like if I see it down five percent, I'm gonna do exactly what it did in like the summer of 2020. Just those little five percent dips, five percent dips, five percent dips, and. Dude, it's like dollar cost averaging the dips. But let's be real. It's not even the price of hex on each side. It's the price of t-shirts on each side is what we need to be paying attention to. Yeah, that too. Yeah, so true. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see a uh, probably a more a rapid rate of the t-shirt on on hex, you know, which is just hex on full chain, mm -hmm. than maybe the e-hex because, like you mentioned, the, the rapid kind of, you know, one's fighting with the other one and they're kind of lifting each other up at the same time. Um, you know, the way that they're calculated is by people ending their stakes constantly. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and, P and then Pulse on Hex or uh, Hex on Pulse is going to have, you know, presumably a lot of shorter stakes. And, you know, you know, as well as I do, anybody that's doing shorter stakes has got a big bag. And every time you unlock uh, more Hex out of the inflation, that's when that T-shirt rate goes up. I don't know if you guys saw yeah. yesterday's rate. We, we only we still only ran like a 5.7 uh, hex per per T-shirt pay yesterday, uh, yeah. but the price per T-shirt and hex went up like 47 points. Oh wow! And it's a lot of there's a lot of, there's a lot of intakes yesterday. 
Oh, people getting that ROI. Wow. I did not check that, that it went up that high. Um, and the thing is, like, you know what blows my mind sometimes, guys? That um, RH mentioned that at one point we could reach a million. It's every time that T-shirt goes up five, ten, whatever, and we're at, like, half a million or a million. Like, the T-shirts are going to go up, like, a million dollars in a day. At one point, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know when it's going to be. Right. <laughs> Jay Money's right. Forty-seven point seven hex t-shirt rate went up yesterday and thirteen the day oh. before. So that's sixty, sixty mm -hmm. hex. Dude, we don't talk it's about that around. enough because you see yeah, today yeah. that's twenty bucks, but that's twenty bucks. So yeah. that's why we don't almost. talk about that. But yeah. bro, when, almost when, thirty. When, almost thirty. Wow. Yeah, that's, if you're sitting on the side. And, and you're liquid and you're kind of just holding, um, you're, you're going to be priced out of those shares very, very quickly. And it's just the way that it goes. And then same thing that you guys mentioned as well, when it comes to getting paid out daily based on the staking percentage. Uh, we saw one person, I think it was a shark, but the point is, is the payout for that day was 10 hex per T-share versus the average, say like 5.7, 5.8. And so... When you've got days like that and, and you're not in, you know, you're not staked, then, you know, the, the values just go into the other people that are holding and that are del delaying the gratification. Yeah, that was the day on uh, Monday, I believe, this week, the, the guy, uh, emergency instake, like $30 million. <laughs> that was yeah. that was that pay of 10.009. And guys, those type of end stakes, we don't mention it enough. But those are the type of end stakes that guys like Nuggets didn't didn't get. He didn't get how the system replenished himself himself by someone t putting in two thousand dollars, taking out ten mil, replenish the system, and it's like a beautiful freaking cycle. And then guys like him, what a month ago was saying that he that, that if someone took a million out, the price would collapse. Well, guess what? Ten times. And the price did for an hour, maybe a couple hours. So yeah, when it go down like four cents, three three cents, four cents, top. It they didn't go down yes. much. Right. right. So that's no, why, yeah, we got back. paid out. That, that, that dipped down to like thirty six cents, I think. Yeah. So yeah, it didn't stay there very long. Um, no. We got paid out ten a bit over ten hex per T share that day and the average APY went up to 64.41% that day, average. Right. Yeah, well, so that's, everyone that's, wins. Double. that's the other bullish thing too, is like, you know, like I mentioned, Bitcoin cycle is three years up, one year down type deal from what we've seen in the past. Uh, and Hex, when we're seeing that dip to 36 cents, like you mentioned, that was just someone just absolutely a market selling, but you see it get bought up so quickly because people understand that not only is it an asset that's secure, but it's an income generating asset. And like Richard's talked about, it's like owning a business or a Bitcoin miner with no overhead. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Money printing. Hey, um, a bunch of people put the house money. Uh, no financial advice, but I put the, <laughs> I put the McDonald's money and I put the beer money. Yeah. We saw that in that documentary, right? That was actually, I was watching Discourse Syndicate before this, and I guess that was yeah. one of RG3's friends. And same thing, you know, he had yeah. told them about it. And then he finally had gotten in. And when you got people selling all their silver or people like Bitfinesse, like for the people that don't know, the guy sold all of his uh, his goods and he lives in his tanker, you know, that he does as a as a truck driver. And so when people are maximizing their, um, their value input so much, that delayed gratification just gets... Uh, rewarded so heavily right i i kept thinking maybe um like i was watching uh the video from uh adrian adrian nyson uh and he was saying that we're ahead of the price maybe by like a year or something and i was like you know what that's pretty much what i was thinking like maybe at this price point you know a quarter to 40 cents in year three man like never never this quick so it's just we're, we're, we're definitely in, in a great situation. 
there's this people are still trying to figure out ways to like now put us at 10. Um, but yeah, it's just at, at this point, we have to figure out that people have been taking their, their gains and the price doesn't dip. Price just keeps going up and to the right. Anyone that's figuring out what the, what the shares, I'm going to start saying it now. We have to like start saying it, that what shares do. So if you can log whatever many shares, whatever cut of that pie, because the pie is paying you that 3.69 inflation. And if you're getting, you know, whatever cut of the pie you're getting, think about that you're paying for it at right now to lock it. You're going to take however long and then it's going to start paying you. Because when Bran and I were locking T-shares, we're pretty much crazy for doing it. Because we might have been locking $20, $30, $50 T-shirt, $10 T-shirt, but then there, it was not paying even, it was not even paying one hex at decimal points. So back then, the payouts they just didn't mean nothing. It's just we were stacking, stacking T-shirts, stacking T-shirts, stacking T-shirts. Now you guys can stack B-shares. And, and Ty and I, we've done, and Doc, we were doing also uh, some some calculations of, I mean, it was some crazy amounts, Brand, of putting like 100 bucks, 50 bucks, because every so often I get someone in the chat that comes to me and says, oh, but you got here and you did this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I got here with 240 bucks and I haven't sold, and that's why I'm where I'm at. But it's, it's, yeah. it's the same if you go in, like Jay was saying, there's never a, a price point that you cannot go in and keep just right in the freaking magic carpet. And it's, then funny say, when you talk to, yeah. it's funny when you talk to B-shares uh, um, and people say, well, how are we, we going to get paid out, uh, you know, similar hex in the future? And the answer is yes, because what, what Identity just said then was, at the start, they were locking up 30, 40, 50 T-shares and getting paid out in fractions of a hex. That is exactly how it is right now. I know because I've got some, I've, I've done some stakes in B-shares and, um, you know, like 92 B-shares is getting a fraction of a hex right now. It's exactly the same as it was back then. It's all relative. And as we move right. further down, down the yeah. chain, those B shares are going to start paying out a whole hex, and then they're going to start paying mm. out two hex, and it's just going to be a rinse and repeat. Right, but yeah. you know what's not going to change? It's not going to change that you just already received that fraction of a hex at forty whatever cents were today. But then that's with you. You're, you're taking it with you for the ride. <laughs> so mm. over there, when you take it out, hex might be ten bucks. It might be fifty bucks. But you got it exactly. at forty cents. <laughs> well, then, yep. then there's also the fact that um, when people feel they diluted too much and they're not getting a big cut of the pie, um, just think about after the average time length that's out there, 5.7 yep. years to, let's say, 10 years, a lot of those T-shares are going to be dropping off, right? So now the pie, mm -hmm. your cut of the pie is going to get bigger as time goes on. Exactly. Well, and then when it comes down to the, the B-share thing, uh, I think, like you mentioned, if you if – you, uh, are looking at other people's capital and you don't think you could ever get to that rate, just understand that you can kind of outstake them as far as the average length goes. But one thing I wanted to cover is, is T-shares on January 5th, 2020, were literally 60 cents. That's the lowest we've seen them. Well, and then now, um, you know, thanks to Ty kind of mentioning the B-shares, uh, you know, one B-share is $8.67. So that's already so much higher than what a T-share initially was at the lowest price. And it's, it's all relative as well. I mean, what's a, a B share going to be in a year? Maybe the cost of a T share right now. Well, funny yeah. you should say that, Bram, because when Identity did his B share video, so guys, if you haven't seen it on this channel, once the show's finished, if you go back, it's only like I think a 10, 15 minute video that Identity's done on B shares. At the time of recording that, B shares were about $4.50 roughly. And today, uh, B shares, if you take a T share and divide it by a thousand, um, that's the B share rate today, which is $8.60. So it's almost doubled. Um, and if you look at the timestamp of that video, I think it might be maybe three weeks. Is that right? You reckon? Maybe three weeks? Three, four weeks? Not even. Yeah, maybe. 
Sorry, that, it that was just, just that was the, it was that week that like uh, JJ and and Giddy, you guys started talking about B shares, and I was like, man, it's, it, it would be nice to start talking about B shares because a lot mm -hmm. I noticed that the only reason I cared about even mentioning B shares is because I noticed that a lot of people were coming into chat, and then they were staying liquid brand almost yep. trying to say that they were going to save for a t-shirt, but they, they don't understand that the t-shirts are so dynamic that if you say, I'm going to save for a $5,000 t-shirt, by the time you get that 5K, you need 7K because mm -hmm. now t-shirts are 18,700 units of hex at 40 cents, da, 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 da. So it's just, I kept telling people, guys, don't, stay liquid by trying to reach something that that you you know you can't it's not that you can't but it's just you just you lock it and then it's like almost saying i want to buy a quarter of a bitcoin at ten thousand, and then you buy a quarter at 15 and then you buy a quarter at 20 and then by the time it's 25 you got your whole bitcoin and then it, it got up to 65 you you know what i mean so they're pretty much the same thing but if if you were to say i want to buy a, a full one then you might never get into crypto. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, just to say that, talk about the Bitcoin example, but then with shares, the best thing is like, as you're locking them, they're paying you. Because it's the example that Ty just mentioned that you, you might not be getting, that the day that we got 10, you might not gotten 10, but then if you have a quarter, then you get your 2.5 units, and that day was a win, you know? Because by the time, a full year pass, you got your quarter here, your quarter there, your quarter here, quarter there. And when by the time Hex is, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks, you're going to have all these units of Hex that you've been getting paid out daily at 40 cents, 50 cents, one buck, two bucks. So, I mean, it's just, it's a thing of beauty, man. I just, I can't believe we're going to get double money printers. It's, it's yeah, out of this league. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> 64 APY, 64% APY, no matter what your B shares or T shares are or whatever. It is what it is. I just yeah, hope yeah. more people understand that and then just don't stay on the sidelines because at that point, that's when I tell everyone the, the way to get into into this product is just it, if you were to use this, I, I keep saying this example, it's just again with Bitcoin. If you were to have bought Bitcoin on the top in April. Right now you're six months in the hole waiting for just your money to get back. I mean, you didn't make a, a, a one Satoshi more. You are just hoping and praying that, that Bitcoin goes to 70 K so you can sell for a win. So it's just at this point, you would have gotten 180 payouts of uh, five of six of 10 of all that if you had locked just one t-shirt back then which back then in april i'm pretty sure that we were at maybe like 2k maybe three but definitely not eight about to be nine like we're now because i know that a year ago huddle dog was talking about five digit t-shirt like it was so unreachable and we're like a fart in the wind to take in like five digit t-shirt i mean it's it's crazy right yeah no i mean you're right and and that's where once again, the, uh, the OGs can kind of evolve with what's going on and not necessarily mention it in terms of, of T-Share or, you know, B-Share is cool too, but same thing like Ty had mentioned, that's going to have the same problem in the future as uh, a T-Share currently. And I mean, at the end of the day, uh, like you guys talk about, it's just the shares in general that are what allow you to earn that interest and for the length of your stake. So if people aren't getting in now because they think that it's too late, you know, little do they realize what what it's designed to do and getting paid out every single day in the world's top performing asset of 2020 and 2021 doesn't matter what you kind of start off with you're going to be at least not be getting diluted uh by inflation uh, as if you were holding just say liquid and not staking exactly. um on this one what um do you guys understand what uh Blackbird is saying, I mean, number of stakers just changes the APY. So are we talking about APY? What, what is he mentioning here? Number uh, that was from our topic before. I believe we've, we've um, we replied in chat. Oh, got you. Why did I reply in chat? Got you, got you, got you, got you. 
Yeah, and, and for the people that missed Big Payday, that was cool. You could stake uh, for one day and get about 30%. Um, but this is almost bigger than the Big Payday because it's a guaranteed duplicate of your of your copy on the ERC-20. So whether people have it liquid or staked, uh, to think that you can have double money printers and uh, a lot of hexagons have already retired off of just e-hex. Like what, uh, what are you gonna do with all that money, you know? Um, if there's any community that can actually make the world a better place or develop products like Richard's done, I think it's, uh, you know, the hexagons. Yeah, yeah we're already exactly. seeing that. We're already seeing that. You guys, there's, there's so many people in the community that are that are trying to pay it forward and help others, and that's that's what's yeah. amazing about this community. It's it's real. Like most of the other communities I've ever been in, and I've been in crypto since 2017. It was really just all about themselves and how they could get your money and enrich themselves. Um, and this, this community is just not like that. No, I mean, it's like, right now. Brent. Yeah, Brent, please. It's, it's teaching people how to fish, right? It's a abundance mentality out of understanding the system itself. You know, you're not trying to get one over on another person. I mean, even though Bitcoin did it 6.5 million X, that's great. Uh, when do you see it doubling anytime soon? Probably not very likely. So for things like Hex, a lot of us understand that, hey, I mean, we're literally just getting started. We're under two years old. And um, there's so much meat on the bone and opportunity. And uh, how cool is it to not only have success yourself, but then be able to have that success permeate in you know, your family or your loved ones, your friends, things like that. Because when you have uh, you know, yourself doing well and the people around you doing well, then everyone kind of lifts each other up. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to drag sure. all my friends and family in. <laughs> I, I even on my way home from work, one of my neighbors was outside. I talked to him for like 45 minutes and his eyes are just glossed over when I talk about the number of X's and gains that are involved in this program. And he's like, man, I got to get in. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what I've been trying to tell people recently is just, just put like, I don't know, maybe like 5% if you're in crypto, 5% of your bag, because at one point I'll feel that the, that five or 10%, on your of your crypto portfolio if you have it in hex it's going to outperform anything else on a bear because on a bear everything's going to be going like this you know and hex is just going to be going so i always call it instead of instead of open to the right i always joke it'll go like slow into the middle because it's just even if the price in fiat might be going down you're still making your same units every day so your bag is getting padded and then by the time the price goes up and to the right again, all of a sudden you have a bigger bag to take with you to the right. So you, I mean, it's just, it's a no brainer. At this point, I would never invest in another crypto that doesn't at least add to my uh, total amount. Like now I figure out, oh wow, I, don't, I cannot just play the game of price. You know, I need to be getting paid for, for what I'm putting out. So it's just, it's working for now. And then um, the way I see it, it's like once we go to Pulse Chain, like I'll be able to use Hex the way it was designed. The way we were trying to use it back in, in January and February of 2020. And then all of a sudden the fees start going higher. So you couldn't move it. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. You couldn't change certain strategies. You couldn't go this many weeks. And it's this it's a shame you know because of, of what jay just said like all of a sudden i was trying to tell a bunch of people all through 2020 um because pretty much by the time we got i want to say brand like maybe by the time we got to like one penny like my amount was had grown so much that i just i was trying to like yell at everyone like dude this is it like get in we're about to launch we had the big pump from bpd we dipped again, we did, we did the New Year's pump. And then all of a sudden, when we do that last dip, I was like, this is it. I know that this is it, this is, please. And I mean, I remember telling my folks, telling a bunch of my family members, I have a cousin in the chat right now that he took advantage, but mm -hmm. that was it. It was like maybe two cousins. Right. And then we told, I mean, another four cousins, they just, they wouldn't even come to the, I remember telling them, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll 
I'll tell you how it's done. We'll do a screen share. I'll, I'll guide you. I mean, I'll put money for you. I had friends that I gave them. I, I gave them a few bucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tried so much, so many different alternatives. And then after a while, I was like, you know what? What I need to do is go to places like Pulse Chain Chat and just talk about what we've been doing for the last freaking year. And, and, and now it's like two years because obviously pre-launch, what now... Brent, I had not paid so much attention of how important was the, the pre-launch and how much info Richard gave us with the EOS videos, with the charts, with the with you know fighting all these all these fudsters and whatnot. Bro, I checked the other day the Naomi interview talking to yeah, uh, yeah. to this guy was two days after launch was December fourth, yep. and then he had the right. issue with fucking McCormack. It was December 9th. You know what? Yeah. My first buck in Hex was December 20th, day 18, bro. So I was thinking, holy shit, if I wasn't so fucking sure that Hex was going to change my fucking life, I would have been fudded out, bro, because I used to watch Naomi. I used to watch Box Mining. I used to watch Omar. I used to fucking watch mm -hmm. uh, McCormack once he did the interviews with uh, Carpellis and the shit with Mount Gox. So I was following right. all these fuckers. And I feel bad that I'm talking this way because at one point they were like, I was there watching, 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 watching. But then it's like, what the fuck, man? Like, it's been now a year and 10. So now at this point, they just look on intelligent because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what coin market cap says. It doesn't matter what Nomic says. It just matters that we're here. We're kicking ass. Richard's still kicking ass. And then Hex is just going up and to the right. I mean, the numbers just... We can't hide them now. It's just, yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying too about like the the gatekeeping on the on the market cap. Like, you can gatekeep um, something that's outperforming everything uh, so quickly. And and when you mentioned kind of your family members, some of them got in, some of them didn't. I mean, at the end of the day, if if someone's not really ready to to learn about that or actually care about that, then they're going to be focused on on the sports or things like that, but the the opportunity is definitely there. And like you mentioned, with Richard, kind of teaching a lot of us about the education. Now, people that are just getting in can hear from OGs uh, their mistakes or people that were in earlier on what they would do differently. And you know, you can learn and maximize your um, you know your strategy right now as opposed to making the same mistakes. So. Connor just threw a really nice question here, and I think that the answer is yes. Um, I know that at one point in time, uh, especially if you're doing 10, 12, 15 years, like I, I think Jay mentioned earlier, you're going to be getting a, a, a thicker chunk of that pie, you know, because uh, someone's going to end stake, someone's going to whatever, whatever, but they're going to they're going to move out of their position, and you're going to get, be, keep getting more. So I think. This is how it's going to work, right, Brent? Like, as we're getting a bigger chunk of the pie, we're going to need to be getting hot more payouts or no? I'm, I'm kind of confused to answer that one. Sorry, Connor. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much just off the uh, the shares in, in general. I don't know specifically if, it, if it'll be paying multiple multiple hacks. I mean, honestly, that's kind of not where my focus is. You know, it's it's kind of like the, uh, the price appreciation, what it's done and that's I mean, true. at the end of the day, there's, there's, I see that a lot, um, a lot of focus in, in the wrong places and, you know, trying to maximize certain strategies. But, you know, if what you're trying to maximize is kind of like holding you from being in already, then you're kind of uh, hindering yourself from, like you mentioned, daily gains. Yeah, on that one, I just, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how that one's going to work. Because the way I thought it was that the payouts would stay very, very similar. But what would change is the price of each unit that you get paid. I mean, am I, am I overthinking right now this situation? Yeah, you, know yeah I mean? you, have a, you have a total number of T-shares, which makes up the whole pie, right? And right. you, can, you can count B shares in that, you know, the whole pie. So as, as those number of T shares that are at the high end start to fall off, there's going to be more hex available because the pie is going to be smaller. Okay, so that's going to raise the price per uh, of hex per T share on a daily payout. 
in the future, it'll go up. Right. But then when it comes to your daily payouts, it'll stay pretty close to the same, right? We'll go from five something that we're now to maybe six or seven. Or will it go to like 20 or 100 and whatever in three to five years? Well, if the thousands of t-shirts fall off, I mean, that's just that many more hex that's going to the rest of the pool. So that, right. that's going to go yeah, up. The, yeah, I yeah, know that's that's considering that the, the staking, uh, everything is kind of like staying the same as far as the OA goes to. Uh, I know Richard has, sure. or not Richard, but... The OA has uh, staked on on big payday and like uh, identity block mentions. You see the the payout go uh, you know a lot lower there. So no one kind of really knows what uh, what the future staking percentage is going to be. But I actually got to uh, got to get going. ID and uh, finish you're good, brother. Thank you so here. much but, um, for being here, man. I really really appreciate that, brother. Yeah, no thanks for uh, for inviting. I'll still be listening in the background, but um yeah, man, looking forward to maybe we can get a. Uh, a scheduled video or stream or something like that sometime oh, and uh, and do some reciprocation. I mean, bro, yeah, I'll have to go, so I'm going to have to go soon. I'll have to go probably in 20 minutes to ID. i got to get dinner on for the kids. It's uh, 20 past yeah. five here. And then I've got the um, AFL football grand final tonight. Ooh, we're gonna, there you uh, go. We want to watch that. Um, but, yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. I'll stay in the chat, but I uh, look forward Thank to you, uh, catching up with you guys next Thanks, time. Brian. Later, uh, many more good many more good memories the last thing i'll say is bitcoin's been around for less than 15 maybe 12 years something like that maybe a little bit over 12 but anyways in hex you've got people that are locking for 5555 days which has never been done before so when you've got something like that that uh people are betting so many millions and they're showing their trust in the system then uh, you just got something that's a force that you know has never been seen before so that's all I have to say. It's uh, it's doing what it's designed to do, which is what Bitcoin claims now, which is store of value. And the last thing is once we become the top one cryptocurrency by market cap, since everyone loves that, then the real the real fun in games is going to be the black hole for the traditional finance, whether it's um, the CDs and the bonds and the silver and stuff like that. People are eventually going to realize that this train isn't stopping. It's only getting bigger as the snowball rolls down the hill. So thanks everyone for having okay. me and uh, catch up with you thanks, in the chat. Right on, Brad.